Hello, welcome to the European Open Briefing for Monday, October the 24th. I'm Rafi Boyajian, currency analyst at XM.com, and we're going to be looking at the latest developments in the currency markets today. So most major currencies are fairly stable this morning. Uh, the overall theme uh, currently is still the expectations that the Fed will likely raise interest rates in December. We had more hawkish uh, comments from another Fed official, San Francisco President William Swan, who said that uh, this year would be good for a rate increase. We also had some Japanese data out this morning, uh, which showed exports declining for the 12th consecutive months. Uh, the euro remains on a downtrend uh, on expected divergence between ECB and Fed policies. Uh, we had, of course, slightly weaker oil prices today after Iraq said that it will not join uh, any production cut or freeze, although uh, the market reaction to those comments was fairly uh, muted. So let's have a look what's happening with the dollar. We can see here the dollar index. It reached a, a fresh uh, near 9 minus high of 98.85 earlier today. Uh, and this comes on the back of fueling expectations that the Fed will raise rates in December. Um, of course, the next meeting is next week uh, for the November meeting, but, but uh, given that it's only days before the US elections, they're not expected to make any changes then. Uh, but on the topic of elections, uh, the growing expectations that Hillary Clinton uh, will win the elections, that's also boosting uh, sentiment uh, for the dollar as it means that the Fed won't have any uh, you know, last minute hurdles against uh, uh, raising rates in December. For example, if Donald Trump was to win, that could potentially lead to uh, higher market volatility. Uh, so we had some comments from uh, San Francisco Fed President John Williams on Friday. He said that uh, this year would be good for a rate rise. Uh, and he also said that uh, it would make sense for more rate hikes next year. Although he does seem to agree with uh, some of the comments from other Fed officials uh, who have suggested that the Fed could allow inflation to overshoot the 2% target. Uh, and Williams did say that it is, it's not good enough to just get close to the target. So potentially, uh, it is just uh, another indication that the Fed will likely stick to its uh, gradual uh, policy of increasing rates very modestly over the coming period. Uh, if you look at against the yen, the dollar uh, is below Friday's highs. Uh, it remains just below the 104 level. Uh, the yen pr uh, did receive a bit of some support today from better than expected trade data. Uh, there was also a manufacturing PMI for Japan earlier today. Uh, although uh, Bank of Japan, who also has a meeting next week, is not expected to ease policy. So the data hasn't really affected too much about what Bank of Japan is likely to do. Um, so, but let's have a, a, a closer look at that data. And we can see here that Japan's trade balance was much uh, stronger than expected in September, 498 uh, billion versus uh, 341 billion yen, uh, uh, the expectations. Um, Imports were down 16.3%, uh, so that's the main reason why the trade surplus was bigger than expected. Uh, um, th although imports, imports, imports were more or less in line, but we can see here exports, they're down 6.9% versus expectations of 10.4%. Uh, nevertheless, despite the better than expected data, this was the 12th consecutive uh, decline, annual decline in exports for Japan. And the main reason for that was uh, the stronger yen and also uh, muted demand uh, from uh, other, uh, from Japan's main export markets. Um, there was some good news within that data. Uh, we, the, in terms of volumes, uh, exports actually rose. They were up 4.7% year on year in September. And that this was the second straight month of uh, gains in, uh, in, ex in volume terms for exports in Japan. Uh, also out this morning, we had the, the Nikkei market manufacturing PMI. So the flash reading for October, it rose from 50.4 in uh, September to 51.7, and that was the highest in nine months. Uh, so overall, the data um, is slightly uh, on the positive side. Uh, could be a sign that uh, third quarter growth in Japan uh, will improve uh, from the second quarter. 
Um, in other currencies, here we can see the euro it continues to slide against the dollar. Uh, on Friday, it fell below the 1.09 level for the first time since March 10, and that was when the ECB uh, had expanded its stimulus program and cut interest rates to record lows. Uh, the expectations that the monetary policy between the Fed and ECB will be diverging over the com coming months, that's the main reason why that's dragging down the euro currently. Um, uh, so most analysts expect the ECB to extend the duration of its QE program in December while the Fed uh, will qu quite likely raise interest rates. Now let's have a look at commodities and commodity linked currencies. Oil is, uh, well it was slightly down earlier today, it's since firmed a little. Um, the main reason why uh, we saw that uh, oil weakness in oil is uh, after Iraq said that it wants to be exempt from any deal to cut output. Uh, of course uh, Iraq is struggling to maintain its current output levels because of the ongoing war uh, with ISIS um, and that's affecting uh, output. So Iraq is saying that because of that it, uh, you know if it wasn't for the war uh, the current conflict in Iraq its output would be much higher so it, it does not want to uh, be put in a situation where it has to uh, cut output. Um, the Canadian dollar um, doesn't lately it doesn't seem to be as much affected from oil. Uh, it's mostly being driven by expectations that the pa Bank of Canada will likely uh, lower interest rates or possibly even uh, uh, start uh, quantitative easing uh, or some other. Um, policy measures to uh, expand uh, its uh, ex expand its monetary base um, so that's the main reason why that we can see we're seeing this weakness in the loonie uh, the US dollar was currently trading at uh, just about 1.33 Canadian dollars uh, if you look at other commodity currencies the Aussie and the Kiwi uh, they're slightly uh, stronger today uh, although uh, the stronger dollar continues to keep the pressure on both currencies Let's have a quick look at uh, what's coming up today. We already had the uh, Eurozone uh, flash PMIs for France and Germany. Uh, we can see here that the composite for France was in line with expectations, slightly down in, in October compared to September. In Germany the composite though was much stronger than expected uh, and a strong improvement from the previous months. It's 55.1 versus estimates of 53.3. So that's good news for the German economy. Soon we're going to have the market uh, PMIs for the Eurozone as a whole. Later in the day we've got CBI trends, uh, manufacturing or export orders uh, for the UK. Uh, it's, uh, but it's looking like a fairly quiet day for the US. We just have the market flash PMIs uh, expected later in the day. Uh, although we do have speeches by Fed officials, we've got James Bullard and Charles Evan, both of them are speaking, so the markets will likely be paying attention to that. That's it from me. Thank you very much for watching and have a great day.